custom plates. How are y'all doing? Um, not taco homies. Not not this week. I apologize for that. Um, but I had to put out something. Everybody knows I've been moving. So here's my new living room, y'all. Check this shit out. Check this shit out, right? I'm going to show y'all. <clears throat> so my girl, you know, she gave me the liberty to decorate this living room however the hell I wanted to. Um, wait, 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 which I appreciate. I got all my Star Trek shit right there. You know what I'm saying? You know, I decided, you know, I wanted to make this living room a Dustin Plates living room. And what does Dustin Plates care about? Well, you you, you go find out. I care about four things. <clears throat> Three things happen to be... Okay, I said four things, but I'm wrong. Five things. Four of those things are media-centric things. Video games, sports, TV, comic books. The fifth thing is, of course, my family. So, like I said, you know what I'm saying... Got my Star Trek wall. Very proud of it. You know, um, I, I got way more stuff that, than what could fit on that shelf. Um, that I got to leave in my closets. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Got the original series. It's the only one I watch. Um, just to help y'all dig. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, um, Dustin Plates. Still got that inner geek inside of him. You know, loves his Star Trek. Um, and, uh, yeah, there it is. Of course, I got this shit on the ESPN, um, app. Um, <clears throat> I was gonna watch the ESPN app, but it froze on me. That shit could start up any second. It's still trying to load. You see the screen moving? It's still, it's still trying to load. So it's like, you know, um, you know, at any minute you could just hear random voices coming from that ESPN app. Let me show you to my next exhibit. This one is, uh, you know what I'm saying, my... You know, my love for basketball. Um, you know, I, a personal hero of mine, Shaq. Um, you know, 2002 playoffs, played against the Sacramento Kings. Um, Chris Webber guarding him. That, that's one of the most famous poses from Shaq. Um, known the man. To be honest, there, I had the action figure of him doing that exact dunk. Um, but it wasn't necessarily an action figure more than it was like a, a collector's piece. And I was a kid, and I was making him dunk on my toy basketball hoop, and it broke all of his fingers off. And I'm like, that ain't Shaq. Shaq can go break his fingers off. <clears throat> this one is my inspirational piece, because it shows you know, Kobe at his young age balling against one of the best uh, defenders, and was one of the best players of all time, Scottie Pippen. And yeah, you know, um, you know, I used this whenever I was playing in, in competitions as my inspiration, because, you know, Kobe, you know, he, he was an inspiration for me when I was a basketball player. Um, I always said, you know, I wanted to be that leader that just took control of a team and helped people win, and I did, you know. So, a little, little bit of backstory about me and uh, my love for the Lakers. Here's my book. I paid $80 for that book, y'all. You know, like, when your team wins the title and you see them commercials about order this book and you get the DVD and you get all sorts of shit. I did that shit when I was... 14, 15 years old, 2001 NFL champ or NFL NBA champions. Uh, to me, the greatest team in NBA history went 15 and one in the playoffs. I don't see anybody else coming close to that. Um, one game and they would have been undefeated. So, and of course, I can't help but had the greatest of all time, Michael Jordan. Um, you know, most people know me as a, as a football fan. We talk about football a lot. That's because football is going on right now. Um, I'm, I'm, basketball is my, my first love in terms of athletic competition. I played basketball. I was one of those kids that was a geek and an athlete at the same time. And, and you know, even though I wasn't a huge fan of MJ, um, when I seen this, I had to pick it up. Um, I got two Michael Jordan cards from when I was younger, and I said, I'm going to put them in there, too. Kind of make them look like these. I bought these. Oh, that shit's a little bit crooked. I just realized that I bought these with the cards already in them. So when I got this one, I said, I'm, I'm going to take it apart. I'm going to put some parts in it myself. And, uh, yeah, you know, um, this, of course, is that famous dunk during a slam dunk contest with Dominic Wilkins. And you can see right there, if, if there's not too much glare, Wilkins, 145, Jordan, 97. And we all know the outcome of that that dunk right there. Grew to become one of the famous dunks in history. And uh, Michael Jordan won the slam dunk contest because of it. That was his second row. I believe it was 1988. 
uh, which would have been the year that my sister was born. Uh, so yeah, that, you know, a little bit of backstory, you know, um, and, and you know, again, Star Trek basketball, two things that have nothing in common, but I love them both. And here's my third. <coughs> My little comic book section. Now everyone's like, "Man, you got two comic books up there. Why? You know, why did you choose them too?" And 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 you know, saying, oh, "You got tons of comic books." Well, if I were to put up, if I were to hang every single comic book up on my wall, it would be legit covered in comic books, and there would be no room for nothing else. Uh, those two are really important to me. Uh, the one left there, that's that's the very first. Uh, comic from the Maximum Carnage series. I love the artwork. I think it looks so pretty. It just looks pretty. I, the blue stands out. The red stands out. Um, when Ron Friends was in Jamestown, I wish I owned that book at the time. Because if I could have got him to autograph it, it would have been worth a hell of a lot of money. I'm talking upwards of $500. Um, but he wasn't... Or When he was in town, I did not own that comic book. My girl just got that for me for Christmas about... Two or three years ago. Um, she got me the whole collection of the Maximum Carnage series. And that's number one. So, you know what I'm saying? She didn't give me the whole collection because I owned a couple of them. But she, she completed the collection for me. Um, anybody that knows comic books, or that knows me, my bad, knows that uh, Captain America, my Captain America, that's my dude. Um, you know, um, he's recently become one of my favorite heroes because my son dressed up as him for Halloween. And it was a special moment for me. Uh, last year, this year he's going to be a Ninja Turtle, but last year, you know, so I've been all about the Avengers lately, and, uh, you know, I'm saying, all the kids been into the Avengers, and, and that's great, because when I was a kid, the Avengers weren't really well known, um, and of course, Spider-Man is my dude, you know, Spider-Man will always be my dude, and everyone's like, oh, you know, you're buying that action figure for your son, and I'm like, uh, he might get one in the future, if he does, he's going to get a Captain America one, though, because I think Captain America is his favorite superhero out of that and you know you know you know the story like i just said he was he was captain america for halloween um here's my other comic books that are valuable to me i haven't found a place for them yet but to describe this one a little bit real quick and why this one's up here um my two favorite stories in the spider-man world is maximum carnage and of course uh the spirits of venom um the reason why I put that one up, to me, Spirits of Venom is a great story, but it does not compare to Maximum Carnage. Maximum Carnage is a story of Spider-Man and Venom, two mortal enemies, joining forces because there's an evil so powerful that nobody could defeat it unless these two dudes join forces. And, of course, they end up getting, like, a team of, like, 12, you know, good guys and bad guys mixed together to fight Carnage and his group. But, uh, you know, to me, that's always been a good story. They made a video game based off of that story alone. And, uh, yeah, you know, to, but the reason why I got Spares of Venom up there, if you're wondering, is I, I, uh, I talked about how Ron Friends was in town. Oh, you know what? I didn't realize that with this display, I actually got his autograph covered up. My bad, y'all check this out. Check this out, man. So, there's, uh, I got Ron Friends's, let me, let me get that. <sighs> Ron Friends's autograph right there. Um, and if you're wondering why he's important, he's been writing for Spider-Man for years. Um, he invented, invented Spider, Spider-Girl, which is the story of Peter Parker and Mary Jane having a daughter who's got half of Peter Parker's genes, so she has half of the Spider-Man ability. Um, he invented Venom. And when I say he invented Venom, he was the guy that, like, um, Stan Lee said, yo, we're going to create this bad guy, he's going to be called Venom. I want you to design him. He didn't invent Venom. He designed Venom. He was the one that decided he's going to be... You know, there's going to be a black suit Spider-Man called the Symbiote. And it's going to detach, grow onto somebody else. And it's going to become this big monster that eats human beings. So there's Venom. Uh, Spirits of Venom, number one. Signed by Ron Friends. And, and, and if you're wondering what my other valuable comics are, um, I always say, you know, when you're, when you're a collector, it's not about uh, the monetary value as much as it is in your heart. And so these used to be all hung up in my living room. Um, I don't got the space for them, but I'm going to show y'all real quick. Um, I got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one. Um, you know, I love the Ninja Turtles. Um, this comic book is probably worth about 10 cents, but to me it's, it's worth way more than that. 
um, I got the thing, which you can see isn't in the best condition. It's about that Fantastic Four superhero right there. It looks old as hell because it is old as hell. Um, I've only ever read this book once, and I will only read this book once because this is one of my oldest, and therefore it's one of the most valuable. Um, I got Aquaman here. Um, Aquaman was one of my very first uh, superheroes that I liked when I was a kid. Um, just because of, you know, uh, I wasn't a big swimmer. Uh, to say the least, if anybody out there, you know, the, the people that watch, if you knew me, I hated swimming. And to have a superhero who, his skill was just swimming all the time, to me that was kind of inspiring. Um, he is a DC comic, everybody knows that I don't like DC comics. But if I were, I mean, Aquaman is considered to be like the lamest character in the DC comic world. But I like Aquaman. And this, again, is one of my older comics. This is older than me, y'all. I got War of the Worlds. Um, uh, once again, one of my older comics. These comics right here, these are these are probably the three that are worth some. Aquaman, The Thing, War of the Worlds. Um, besides the two that I got signed by Ron Friends, and yes, I got another one I'm about to show y'all, but these two right here, I also like the artwork on this one, this one looks just, the cover, here, let me hold that up better for y'all, the cover just looks so nice and pretty and crisp, and I like that, <clears throat> of course I gotta have Star Trek number one, which, um, when I found out that they made a Star Trek comic based on the movie series, but what they did, it was clever. They took all the old episodes from the original series and they made comic stories featuring the new versions of the characters. Um, so that one, of course, means something to me because, as y'all know, I like Star Trek. Sorry about the shabby camera work. And, of course, like I said, Spider-Girl, also signed by Ron Friends, who was awesome. He was cool, man. Uh, meeting him was, was great. Um, I've also met... I can't even remember the dude's name uh, because he wasn't really a, a, a favorite writer of mine. But anytime a comic book writer comes to town, I gotta run to meet him. And this dude, um, he does more than write comics. He wrote for uh, the Simpsons, and I got two Simpsons comics that I had him sign as well. Um, they're not up there because you know, I mean, I'm not a Simpsons comic book fan, uh, but they were funny. I read them after I bought them. I had this dude sign them, and I read them. It's good shit. Uh, he writes for the show, too, which to me is cooler than the comics because, I mean, when you think of The Simpsons, you think of the cartoon. You don't think of the comics. Uh, so, number four. All right, now this one I put a ton of time in. All right, and now right now I'm looking fucked up because my Amiibo is crooked. But here's my Nintendo wall. Um, No, this is my, mostly it's my Super Nintendo wall. I got a, I got a SimCity. I don't know, Donkey Kong Country. You know what? I'm going to turn the light off on this one. I got that Sim City, which I need a booklet for. Donkey Kong Country. Yo, these games, yo. If you want to buy these on eBay, look at the prices on these. I got like $2,000 worth of games. Populous. The first F-Zero. Out of this world. Yo, that game's tight. I didn't play this game until I was an adult. And that's a great game. Contra 3. Wingus Commander Zelda Ocarina Sorry y'all, about to say Ocarina of Time That's obviously a link to the past And um, that one football game It's okay And here's, you know the Games that I don't have the cases to Got a lot of good ones Ninja Turtles, I got Rock and Roll Racing I got uh, Lemmings, I got Super, Super Mario I got All Stars Donkey Kong Country 2, Dr. Mario. Those are the only two Amiibo I have. Yo, listen. Um, I'm broke. I don't have an extensive collection. So sue me. Don't sue me. Uh, you know, I love y'all. Please don't sue me. That, that's it. Um, I decided if I'm going to have two Amiibo, I want Mario and Luigi. The original Super Smash Brothers game is in the background. And I got a couple of Atari hits. Got E.T. right here. You know what I'm saying? Um, considered to be the worst game ever. Uh, almost killed video games, which would have been super sad. I don't know what I would have done without video games in my life. And, uh, you know, I collected the, the Mario cards, and with them came a couple pop-outs, and you might be like, Dustin Plates, 
what are you doing? And actually taking the pop outs out of the case, popping them open and displaying them. And I'm like, yo, I got duplicates. So I still got some that are, have not been touched. And I got that one right there. The last wall. The last wall I got to show y'all. I got to zoom out for real on this one. <clears throat> My family wall. Look, check that out. Faith, love, and family. There's Ty all over the place. My son. You see him dancing at the end of the show. You know who he is. And, uh, yeah. And I did all this. I put the shelves up. I did, you know what I'm saying? I did all these decorations. So I take a lot of pride in this. Um, you know. This is the living room I always wanted, so I'm, I'm glad I got it. So that that's my crib, that's my living room. I ain't showing y'all anything else. Um, I just want to say real quick, when it comes to the taco homies, um, like I said before, this is not an official episode. I can't, I can't do that, man. Not without Mango no more. You know, me and Mango for now on. Anytime that we're unable to shoot together, I'm just gonna make a short whatever. 20 minute video maybe i'll make turn it into two parts i don't think i will but uh yeah just let's be able to say that like you know please understand <clears throat> that this is really important to us and that we have lives and oftentimes that means that we can't shoot um more times than not when we're unable to be together it's usually because of something that's going on in my life um uh, mango you know, when he's not working, I mean, like, his legit job, it's all about entertainment. He makes music. He makes videos with me. He's constantly coming up with new ideas, new things. You know, we're, we're planning on making some music videos together. Um, with me, it's like, when I'm not working, videos are really important to me. This is something I love doing. That's why I, I will not stop doing it anytime soon. Uh, but please understand that. i got a family. Uh, when I don't have a babysitter, I'm stuck at home. Mango lives legitimately a two-minute walk that way. I could be in this house before this video ended if I wanted to be. But I'm here with my son, and I can't do that today. Um, also, I'm a little bit sick, so it's kind of a, a double whammy. Um, getting over some nasty illnesses. Um, I feel better, and I was ready to shoot today. But shit ha happens. My girlfriend got called into work. Uh, you know, my, my son needed me, so it's daddy time. And, and to understand the importance of family, please understand that when we started this channel, there's going to be three homies, and one of them decided not to do it f for the sake of his family. He, he's got a lot of kids. If you're watching, man, you know, much love and respect, um, because, you know, it, it does take, it, it takes a huge sacrifice. Your whole family needs to understand that, like, this is something you got to do, and when, when, when things happen, doctor's appointments, you know, emergencies, stuff like that, you have to make that decision of what's more important, shooting a show or being with my family. And when my girl gets called into work, obviously I can't leave my son alone. If I can't find a babysitter, it's daddy time. And, and I don't mind being daddy plates instead of dusting plates uh, for, for an extra day. You know, I love my son to death. He's taking a nap so that I can record, thank goodness, because if he wasn't taking a nap, there won't be no video. Uh, but thanks for watching. Uh, keep tuning in because we're really going to uh, reward uh, y'all viewers in the next coming weeks. When we're able to record together, like Mango's been uh, kind of like secretly talking about this music thing he's getting into and that he wants to release some music on the channel. And I'm huge. I'm, I'm, I'm glad for it. Um, Part of us is like, yo, you know what I'm saying, let's not do too much, let's do a little sample so that the people get interested, maybe somebody will buy his album, uh, but he really just wants to go full-blown, listen, if you're watching, he wants to reward y'all and give y'all some free music, so, um, it'll be on the channel, and in the future, we're gonna make some videos, we're gonna make some videos, um, so, uh, once again, y'all, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for watching every week. Um, check out the Facebook page. I haven't been pushing the Facebook page enough. Check out the Facebook page. Just look up the Taco Homies on Facebook. You know the deal. Um, I'm out, y'all. Uh, peace, love. And 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 if you're a family person, uh, you know, take the cue from me. Spend an extra day with your family. Um, you know. Your children, your loved one, whatever it might be, your parents. Um, 
you know, sometimes people forget how important that stuff is. And as much as I love making videos, nothing will make me more important than spending a day with my son or anything like that. So thanks for watching. And check this shit out, man. This video's been going on for, yo, <clears throat> I'm going to edit some chunks of this out so it might not be exactly 24 minutes long. But this shit is still loading, y'all. Same, same screen. Same screen. If you see that in the beginning, it talks about Taylor and the Bills and all that. Same fucking screen. What's up with that, ESPN? It's not my internet connection because I can do a Netflix or YouTube or whatever. Thanks, y'all. I'm out. You know what I'm about to do? I'm about to go eat some. Oh.